This week's episode is sponsored by Helio Gas Detection and Rising Suns, the award-winning brewery in Cork. everyone this is late for the metal cell podcast i'm joined with party cannon how are you guys doing not too bad happy to be back yeah doing great but tired yeah. to travel but we're here we made it i'm going to be super positive if we just go against these guys i'm having the best day of my life <laughs> you're living your best life living my best life um so for our listeners who maybe haven't heard of you guys before do you want to introduce yourselves and the roles you play in party cannon chris i play bass and vent and i do all the driving and merch and social media and all the other fun stuff that goes with being an event. I'm Martin, I play the drums. I'm Mike, I play guitar and I'm the lead a responsible member. <laughs> very good, very good. Um, so, welcome back to Ireland. The last time you guys were supposed to come over was with suffocation, but stars didn't align. But you guys are finally here. Yeah, so last time we came over was 2017. And last time we played Dublin, maybe I think there's maybe 10 people there. And since then, we've been trying to come back. Uh, We've had like maybe quite a few tours booked for Ireland, like Dublin, Belfast, stuff. But uh, it just never seemed to work out. So when the Suff Kitchen came around, like, oh great, this looks, this is like a legit tour. It'll be great. Uh, Suff Kitchen, favorite band ever. So then obviously back to the So obviously Gamma Bomb swooped in on it right. We're actually an Irish band, so the chances of us cancelling Irish gigs is very slim. It's like great, we're on this, we're on this. Let's do it. And um, you know, it's a pity that Suffocation didn't pull through, but you know, things like that happen. That's part of not just really. Yeah. It happens. Sometimes people fall out. Sometimes obligations don't get filled. You have to just roll with the punches. Exactly. You just got to roll with it. Um, so, how would you describe your sound? Dumb. <laughs> Irresponsible. Uh, just imagine dying feet played by people wearing like oven gloves, and then you kind of got off sounds. Like. It's a pretty unique sound. Like you're. Um, I just love how your vibe is so different to the music that you make. <laughs> I don't know how fun, like... When I was younger, I listened to this kind of music, I always thought it was, like, fun to listen to. And obviously, the gore thing is, like, cool and all, but I'm like, ah... Nobody's gonna take me seriously if I step on the stage, like... This song is about gutting women and things like that. <laughs> how you all doing? But no, it's just kind of, you know, more us, like... Obviously, we're into, like, punk music and hardcore and things like that, and it's also more about the vibe as well, like, serious music, so it's like, ah... Not much too, it's, it's fun at the end of the day. It's made fun. It's serious music done in a fun way. Exactly, it's very eye grabbing. So um, that leads us on to a uh, really good answer to our next question. You know, the part you kind of name and the logo, you know, it has its own draw and appeal to it because it's so colourful. Uh, what was the story behind that? So, uh, the name Party Can is, is came from a really elaborate story our singer told us. Basically, he bought this thing called a party can, which is just like a gigantic party popper. And he was telling me how he was really excited to use it on his like dad's birthday or something like that. And uh, it was this very, very like long drawn out story. And uh, he's like, I spent 15 pounds on this. I sing it out all day. I like, I knew my dad, it's just gonna be fun. Like, then he just kept building up, building up, building up. Build up. Then uh, he said he went to surprise his dad of it. Then he pulled the string out of it, and just a little puff of smoke came out, <laughs> and nothing happened. He's like, I spent 15 pounds on this. I've been looking forward to this all day. And we all just thought this was hilarious. And uh, guitarist Jack, original guitarist, he went to me, he's like, oh, party can't you be a song title? And I went, no, I'll be the band name. <laughs> and that is literally how it went. went. And yeah, as scripted as that sounds, <laughs> that's how it went down. And also, okay, so the band's called Party Cannon. And uh, what I kind of conjured was good, I just thought a logo or something. Yeah, it's cool, it makes sense. We didn't really set out to like ruin festival posters or really stand out, it was just. What we did, it just kind of fit the vibe. It was like, yeah, it's cool. When we started the band, it was originally called something like Catatonic Fanonology or something like that. Something we really couldn't pronounce. But when I was like writing songs for the band, and when Jack, or guitar was writing on Craig stuff, uh, we still just had dumb song titles. Like, we already had songs of Battle of Spider Man, Big Tasty, There's a Reason You're Single, and stuff like that. So when the idea of calling the band Party Cannon came around, I was like, oh, that just fits. Let's go, we'll just stick with that. More of a vibe, more of a vibe. And then. Yeah, here we are 14 years later. People are like, people are writing marketing essays and putting uh, marketing books out about the logo and things. There's loads of articles online about why is this genius marketing. So people are talking like, oh, you know what's genius marketing? How did you come up with that? Like, I don't know. If I was that good at marketing, I would not work a 95 desk job. <laughs> like, I, I would be doing some better. <laughs> yeah. 
happy, happy accident, anyway. We fell upwards. Yes, fell we upwards. fell upwards. Our low IQ synergized in a way that, like, <laughs> yeah. let us do this. Dumber than the sum of its pops. <laughs> <laughs> all your IQs together made, like, an average one. <laughs> We've got one IQ between us and we all get a turn of one at a time. <laughs> Uh, you can all give an answer for each for this next question. If you could collaborate with any musician dead or alive, who would it be? I'll let you go first, Mike. I'll Bjork. <laughs> Bjork, please come and do a song with us. I, I was going to think of Bjork. Bjork. <laughs> and I beat you to it. Yeah, go. Uh, dead or alive, musician, I'm going to go with Stevie Wonder. Stevie Wonder, tied with Sting, is the best musician of all time. So if I could have any kind of collaboration with Stevie Wonder in any capacity, even if it's just a sample of him tell me to get out of his house or anything like that, I would, I'd fucking be over the moon. Best songwriter of all time. Song. And Martin? I would love to Prodigy. If they would even just do a remix of one of our songs, I would die happy. That's fair. I've got one more to add to that, actually. Yeah, go for DJ it. DJ HP from Scooter. <laughs> yes. I don't, why did I not think of that? We, we recorded in Germany uh, a guy from York who's like childhood friends of DJ, DJ HP and I've been hounding him for ages like can you get HP Baxter just to shout out Parican or something just anything anything yeah, like. I, I actually emailed their management trying to see like how much would he charge literally for 10, 15, 20 seconds just talking at the start of a, a song please get back to us and they ignored me oh no you got aired nothing I got absolutely patched you should try DJ Khaled we the best music apparently <laughs> He's the one, like. Yes, apparently so. <laughs> and, um, you know, you guys released Partied in, ha- uh, Partied in Half Hot Sauce, you know. How did you come up with that piece of merch? It was kind of, not, not to be too dour about it, it was kind of thrust upon us. Someone got in touch with us, like, this is a good idea. I'm like, is it? Okay, cool. But, like, they kind of showed us designs. The guy showed us the label and things, like, this is a very, very good idea. And you know what? Fuck it, let's do it. And, uh... We kind of got involved in the process of things. Like Mike is probably more than a hot sauce expert than I am, and we're more kind of delved into it. Like, you know, this is like a party kind of idea. It's a pretty like good idea that people seem to enjoy. And I have spent a lot of time scorching myself with different like iterations of like the hot sauce coming in. And uh, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's been fun. It's been fun. It was like a nice idea. It was posted us, and yeah, worked out pretty well. Following upwards. When we first got the offer, we're like, right, we need to make this like thermonuclear, like absolutely. <laughs> You can't even open the bottle without being blinded by it. And the more we thought about it, the more we're like, if this is meant to be something that we can sell and people are supposed to enjoy, that might be a bad idea. And I believe it was Chris that was like, we should try and get it bright pink and just have it stand out. And I was like, right, cool. So we want it to be flavoursome and pink. And then the chaps that made the, the, the hot sauce chilli of the valley actually came back and went, we can put edible glitter in it too. And it was like, <laughs> oh my God, yes. It's still hot enough to have a warning label on it because I felt like if Park Islands would release something, it should come with a warning label. And where does it rate on the Scoville level? Is well, it there's an extract in it that's 500,000 Scovilles, and then there's also habaneros and I think Scotch bonnets in it, and I don't know what else. Heat wise, what would say it's kind of like us, it represents as well. Quite nice in small doses. <laughs> very, very easy to have too much. Yes, uh, I would say it's a welcome well. Uh, yeah, it's about half a million school units, it's enough. We spent ages trying it. We we're, were filming a bunch of videos of it, and I was like blinded after eating a bunch of it. Like, my face was swollen. I couldn't deal with it. We we need Sean Evans to like get it on hot ones or something. Oh, that'd be good. He must be like immune to hot sauce by now. Right? Did you watch the video of him eating the pepper X with the guy that grew it, the world's now hottest chili, and the two of them ate one, and the guy that made them, he's obviously like totally immune. He's just standing there, and him, the Sean, and the other two guys that ate them looked as if they were actually about to just melt. <laughs> Like Raiders of the Ark, <laughs> gone. Fuck that. <laughs> and do you like spicy food yourself, or? I do. Like I, I used to like the idea of eating super, super spicy hot sauces and just being like as if it's a challenge. But what I was finding is the more I was eating really hot stuff, there was just no. I, I wasn't getting the flavour that I was looking for as well. So we were conscious of that when we, we had the, the recipe um, ideas with Chili of the Valley. It was like we wanted to be tasty, but still really hot in terms of what builds up. So you can enjoy it in small doses, cook with it. Or if you really want to be stupid, you can pour it all over your face and get it in your eyes and really hurt yourself, as the chap that did in London. Yes. I feel really sorry for him. Like that was just such a bad idea to pour it on him. <laughs> and that, and no judging way, no bad way. I'm so glad he's okay. And it made for some great footage. And it, it was a real spectacle. That all our faces and any video of it is like genuine shock horror. 
but basically they bought two bottles and decided to open them, jumped up on the stage, opened them and poured them in his mouth and managed to get it in his hair and went in his eyes and to go to the hospital. It was pretty bad. Yeah. We came off stage, uh, the venue was like, don't use too much confetti. So the first thing we did was use way too much confetti. <laughs> and I came off stage and I said, before, I was like, hey man, really sorry about all the confetti. Went, don't worry about the confetti. The venue are more angry about the guy that mixed himself with hot sauce. <laughs> He's had to go to hostel and get his eyes flushed out. <laughs> so, uh, long story short, spicy food is good, just don't pour in your eyes. <laughs> yeah. And Martin, do you like spicy food? I do actually, yeah, but I don't like the day two part of the spicy food. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. so have you guys tried the McDonald's McSpicy? Where does it rate on it? No, not, not really like that, but like, for example, I went to Wagamama's and I tried the uh, spicy katsu curry. But the day two was quite painful. <laughs> like firecracker or fire yeah. breather broth or something? I it felt like sitting in the yogurt. <laughs> Refrigerating your toilet paper. Bad times. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> ah, exactly. We're, we're getting crass here, I apologise. <laughs> we're no. a professional band for professional fe- uh, people and we should represent <laughs> ourselves better. Yes. No, this is an audio episode. It's great, like, for <laughs> visualisation. <laughs> yeah. Oh, nobody wants to visualise that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's put the situation Craig or Tars is in at the moment. Uh, sorry to out you here, Craig, but he's missed his first gig ever. Because they phoned me up at half one this morning and be like, I've had constant diarrhoea for two days now. <laughs> Please do not come get me. <laughs> I was like, I'll let you off this one, Craig. But credit to him. He's flying out tomorrow to finish, finish the run of gigs. So uh, we hope you feel okay, Craig. <laughs> Shout out to Craig. <laughs> <laughs> he's a trooper. He's a trooper. The band was formed in 2010, and Party in Half is uh, celebrating its uh, 10th anniversary recently. You guys doing a series of shows. Um, what do you think has attributed to you guys staying together for so long? Well, that's a fun question because uh, from the Party in Half lineup, only two of us are left. So what's attributed to this is uh, I'm very very stubborn. So uh, when we actually released Party in Half. We thought we were going to just play the festival in Vienna and like dissolve because we were having trouble having a, uh, find a drummer who could play the stuff who'd want to stay in the band. And then our guitarist Jack, who's on the front cover, he quit the band. He had a bunch of personal issues and we had a fallen out. So we're friends again now, but uh, I just got to the point where, like, right, every everything we did, it was just like another obstacle to get sent back. One step forward, two steps back, so it's like two times. But eventually we got Martin to fill in for a gig and I was like, okay, this fits, we asked him to join. We got Mike to cover for a few gigs. So we're like, okay, this kind of fits. So we kind of just, it just kind of fell into place. But I think what's kind of kept us going from there on is uh, we've always had the same kind of vision of uh, we know we kind of onto something. We play like ridiculous and brutal music, but we think we can't take it like for rounds and for a field. And uh, the fans have just been insane over this time as well. Like ever since Part and Half came out, there's been like a devoted following of people like I fucking love this band, which has always been like surreal. Weird, underneath me. So uh, yeah, just. Double luck as well. Everything's gonna fall in place, and now we're still here ten years later. People still want to hear party and have songs. People still want to hear new stuff. Uh, yeah, can't be more grateful than that, really. Pretty good. And how did the um, anniversary shows go? Good. Very well. Very well, I'd say. Uh, so we did three UK ones. We did one in Manchester, one in London, which is where the hot sauce mixing incident happened. And they're all very well attended. We had a bit more a spectacle for them since it was our headline gig. We brought out Jack, our guitarist. We disemboweled them. We had like organs and stuff inside him, and that was pretty fun. Uh, it was magic stuff, we had a bit more stage show, way more props. We hand selected like, support bands as well, so it was all really curated, so that was really fun. Then we went to America, did pretty much a month in America, just uh, playing part and half stuff, and that went pretty well. We played rock cool bands, met a lot of new people. A lot of people were coming up being like, I've listened to this since I was in high school, like 10 years ago. Uh, people were like, I drove eight hours just to see this. I was like, cool, that's, that's insane. Then last week there, we did the final, the final full-on part and show in Glasgow, and that was nearly 300 people turned up for that one, and that was mad, that was mad as fuck. So yeah, it's been very well received, so we hope that when we release our new album, people aren't like, eh, just play, play the old stuff. <laughs> uh, can you give us any details on the new album, or? It's done, and we think it sounds okay. <laughs> uh, but I, I don't know when you're releasing this interview, but it might be a single out by then. We signed to a new label. I'm not gonna give any details about that. Signed a new label, so hopefully it'll be a bit more of a push in this album. Uh, yeah, we recorded the album in the farm in Wales in the middle of nowhere, and it went out pretty well. Went out pretty well. Uh, yeah, so new sit on it. It's all done. It's coming this year. Music videos, everything like that. All good. All good. 
Watch the party can in space for more info. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Big things coming. <laughs> so are coming soon. Very silly things are coming soon. As usual. <laughs> Top ten bands that are going to blow up in 2024, like fingers crossed, eh? <laughs> but we kind of been joking about that. Like, it leads on quite nice for your question about like the solid lineup and stuff. When we got the offer for the newer label and to put the new album out and whatever else, we we're like, right, cool. We need to ride this till the bubble bursts. We need to yeah. all of the mindset. Like, we need to go like 110 percent at this as much as we can till either it really works and it's been great so far. I don't mean that as in like. Well, that's the hard work just finally paying off. Like, it's been a great time, and it just seems to be getting even more fun and more dumb. There's, there's potential here that something might happen, and it's it's, it's exciting. It's really exciting. So, uh, fingers crossed. Awesome. I wish the best for you guys anyway. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. No problem. And uh, do you have any favourite album releases of 2024 so far, or any that you're looking forward to? 2024? Uh the Spawn Sage just released a new song. That was fucking amazing. New Gorgasm. New Gorgasm. Yeah, it's like it's like 2003 again. Gorgasm, Vertiquin, and The Spawn Sage just released new songs. So that's like, I'm stuck in that year musically. So it's like it's been a fucking great year for me already. It's only February. So yeah, shout out to those bands. Yeah, I'm looking at weird with the band. I, I, I do listen to death metal, but not as much as the other guys. I listen to a bit of everything else. So I just pop, fucking <laughs> usually I pop electro dance stuff older metal so like I'm, I'm bad for keeping up with more modern releases so fair I'm enough anything you've been this. jamming out lately um I've went back to Charlie Puth uh, voice notes great album great album Kim so, Petras is always on in the van Kim Petras is yeah. fantastic this is slot pop she speaks for my generation <laughs> <laughs> and Martin anything you're looking forward to this year or well, anything that's caught your attention orgasm I don't know <laughs> every time I'm put on spot it's like uh, uh, uh <laughs> yeah I can't I can't think of many things I don't know maybe new uh, get a king album I'll <laughs> <laughs> be I'll be the new uh, it'll be music <laughs> new yeah. album that was cool yeah no. yeah that was there'll be some whammy bar slayer, uh solos <laughs> in that anyway I don't, I don't imagine so yeah we two festivals of Kerry King and I can't wait even for you guys to say that, it's like unreal. Yeah, no, it's pretty mad. We're playing a festival in Poland and Bruce Dixon and Kerry King are both playing in their solo acts. And that's like my two favourite bands from when I was a kid. If I, everyone thinks I'm a gimp for us, but if I meet Bruce Dixon, I'm going to fucking freak out. <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to film you having a full-on episode. Like Body Count are playing as well. I meet Ice-T, Kerry King and Bruce Dixon in the same weekend. I, I can die happy. We need to call them all out to come out on stage where we're there and crowd surf them. My mom fucking loves Law and Order. She doesn't know who Ice T is, but if I send her a picture, hey mom, it's me and the guy from Law and Order. She's like, oh wow, so your little band thing actually does stuff. <laughs> like, like. Yes, mom. Yes. Yes. Um, and here's our last question for you guys. Um, do you have any advice for anyone wanting to start a band in 2024? Network. That's all it's about. Understand your audience. Understand your niche you fall into. Go to gigs. Build up a community. Talk to as many people as you can. Just get as many places you can possibly do. Uh, practice your instruments. Definitely, yeah, practice. <laughs> Put, have something quality to give people, but uh, yeah, just know your audience, know who you want to reach, have some goals, and just figure out step by step how to get those goals. With social media being so kind of prevalent these days, uh, it's quite easy to reach the people you want to reach if you know how to do it. So uh, yeah, build a community, network, that's the main advice I can give you. I think that's fair. Uh, I would just end on spay and neuter your pets. <laughs> But that's just general advice. Yeah, Starting a band, as advice. the guys have said, like I think it's astounding to where we've got, with the help we've got, but to start off with, literally just being a, right, cool, Chris wanted to start a band, got guys together, they were all keen, wrote songs, and it's just like, right, if we can play gigs a couple of hours away, we'll just drive down, play the gig and come home. And just that kind of, I don't even know how to put it, like, strong-headedness, like that, we want this to work, we want to do these things, so we'll just go and do them. And if it doesn't work out, at least we tried. That I think that's probably the, the, the best advice I could give. It's a good attitude to have. Like, I, it may not work out, but at least I tried. Absolutely. Uh, you never know until you try it, and the worst comes to worst, you try it again. Maybe it works that time. Exactly. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Guys, thank you so much for sitting down with me. Thank you. Thanks for coming out. And check out Party Cannon everywhere. <laughs>
been initiated. I am a drug user. Fuck the police! 